Trent Baalke deserves credit for something that he has gotten absolutely right since he's been the Jags GM. Yeah, I'm being positive today. Find out what I'm talking about here on Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I'm the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, Tony Wiggins. And here it's your team every day. We love to say thank you for making us your first listen. And we mean that from the bottom of my heart. Make sure you go over to the YouTube page, tap into the Locked On Jaguars page. Make sure when you get there, like, subscribe, hit the bell. The bell gives you a chance to get a notification each and every time we drop an episode. And make sure wherever you listen to your audio podcast, you tap into that location every single day as well. We don't want you to miss anything here on Locked On Jaguars. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Shout out to the everydayers for joining me here every single day. And you can be an everyday. All you got to do is join me here every single day, just like them. All right, here's what we're going to talk about today. The good of Trent Baalke. I know, man, y'all think I'm getting soft and making this all about sunshine and rainbows. No, I have said in the past, I don't have a personal agenda against anybody. And when something is wrong, I'll point it out. But when something has gone right, I will point that out too. So therefore, it's going to be show Balky some love today, not for everything, not for anything he's done so far, but mainly for what he's done in the past in the first round. I think day one will be a good day for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the draft. Day two can be good, but it likely won't for the same reasons that I'm sitting here and I'm telling I just don't think Trent has done a very good job on day two, right? So there you go. All that positivity, it lasted real real short right uh, according y'all thought i was going I, I told you i wasn't changing over a new leaf but no what we're going to do is we're going to just tell the truth day two isn't being bad i'll try to tell you why i think he can make day two a little bit better also and then last but not least finally in segment three the draft must haves and hope nots things that they must have when they come out of the draft and things that i hope do not happen but back to the top, we're not going to bury the lead. We're going to get right into it. Say what you want to say about Trent Baalke. Trent Baalke has hit on these number one, these first round draft picks. And I know it's it, it's it's like, well, wait, you're talking like the dude found something or did something that everybody else wouldn't have done. I'm not sure everybody would have picked Trayvon Walker. In fact, even with Trayvon Walker obviously doing enough to prove people wrong, uh, I'm sure that there's still a large majority of people uh, that would rather have Aiden Hutchinson. I do not think Aiden Hutchinson would be better for this Jaguars team than Trayvon Walker. And that's all that matters. I do not think that uh, he would have provided the things uh, for the Jaguars that he necessarily does for Detroit. And and I don't think he would have done the same, uh, the things that, um, Trayvon does for the Jags. I think he would have put up some numbers. I think he would have easily probably had the same sack total. But I I just don't believe that the team, and and we can talk about numbers and stats, or we can talk about impact. I don't think it would have been impacted the way this team has. Basically, Trayvon Walker is the perfect pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's one of the three best players on the team. All right. I'm not saying the other guy wouldn't have been, but he's one of the three. Ironically, Trevor Lawrence is one of the three best uh, players on the team, and that was the dude picked the year before Trayvon. And then the year after Trayvon, they took Anton Harrison, and this is real impressive because they moved back twice at the end of the first round and still got the dude that probably was the best offensive lineman as a rookie in the National Football League. So that's three years. And you include Travis Etienne, the year that they picked Trevor Lawrence. He hasn't missed. He hasn't missed. So day one, 
I am certain the Jacksonville Jaguars will come away with a really, really good football player on day one of the draft. I know, man, it's easy scouting and that's no big accomplishment. Listen to me. When I can say something positive about Trent Baalke, it is a, a, a good accomplishment. Okay. Two, historically, picking early has not been the thing that you think it has been. It's not the flex that you think has been for the Jacksonville Jaguars because they have made a ton of mistakes historically in the first round. Uh, in, in every round, but mainly in the one that everyone thinks is so easy and the one that everybody believes is a no-brainer. It's not so much of a no-brainer anymore because they're picking in the 20s. The Jaguars are a team that, that made the playoffs last year and they were pushing for it again this year and didn't find out until the last game of the season that they weren't going. So they were pushed. They could have been 26 again, 27th, whatever whatever Houston is, that's where, or 23rd, that's where the Jaguars could have been. But they're not the 22nd because they were the last team to not get into the playoffs. Therefore they got to do a little bit more work. The concern is, is can they do more than be good on day one? But just for the sake of this segment, I want to give you some good news. The good news is, is if they do, and this is real rare for me to say about the Jacksonville Jaguars. So make sure you listen real close. If they do what they've done in the past, they'll be fine. And you can't say that about this organization in any other way except one, and that is they'll be good making their first round pick. They will come out of day one with a good football player. This will not be Taven Bryan over Lamar Jackson. This will not be them trying to stand up and explain to you with draft terminology and all of that other stuff why the pick back then in 2018 or whatever it was, or 2019, why? Why was that pick so terrible, right? Shout out to Taven Bryan, still in the league, making money, collecting checks. Good for you. Shout out to Tyson Alu Alu, had a long career, right? Still wasn't worth the top 10 pick. That's just the way it goes. So what we have here is a situation where you can't allow – the total pass to cloud the vision of the fact that that Thursday night, that Thursday, when they go to draft that Thursday, that the Jaguars will make a good pick and a good selection. Day two can be good too, but it likely won't. I'll tell you how day two could really, really, really be good. Really good. If the Jaguars move back multiple times, and are able to get enough ammunition or ammunition, either way you want to say it, ammunition or ammunition, I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me, right? That they get enough of whatever it is that they need to load up on. How about that one? To get themselves in a position to get two players before the end of the second round. Then it'll be even more spectacular. You know, it'll even be really, really spectacular. If the Jaguars trade their second round pick and next year's first round pick and come back up into this draft and get another player late in the first round, likely won't happen. But if they're just totally infatuated and in love with two guys and they're willing, and they're, it'll probably cost them now. It'll probably cost them maybe that when well, they can't trade the third because it's a compensatory pick, but it might cost them that fourth too. But if they, because they're coming from way back, they're coming from in the 20s, like. Pick number, what is their pick in the second round? Well, it's, they're 17th. They're not 22nd. They're 17th. Their pick is like 48th, all right? So that's going to take a lot of ammunition for them to get back up into the second into the first round. But all of those things are good scenarios. But if they stand pat, I can tell you right now, day two is going to be one that's a head scratcher. Because like I said, if they do what they've done in the past, they'll be fine as it pertains to the first round. They do it. They've done in the past as it pertains to the second round. Y'all got a whole lot of stuff to be upset about. And we're going to talk about it here in segment two on Locked on Jaguars. Not before I tell you about today's sponsor, which is FanDuel. I am sitting here as we speak, watching the brackets get busted, bent over and tore down. 
right here on Locked On Jaguars. So what we really, really, really have to focus on right now is this. FanDuel, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Woo! If your $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they come, until they cut down those nets. Now, listen, Duquesne has already made a nice, nice showing of themselves and some other teams didn't hit that spread. Make sure you read up when you get to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your bets on college hoops until the net get cut down. Segment two here on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. We're going to attempt to go from the good to what hasn't traditionally been as good, and that is going from picking first to picking in the second round. From the first to the second round has just not been very good, right? For the Jaguars, you know, you know, you know this. All you got to do is just look back at history. And you can see it. You can see it for yourself. If you look back through history, the Jaguars have not fared well in the second round of the draft. Tyson Campbell, uh, the first year that Trent Baalke was the GM. Sure. Good player. I get it. But outside of that. They haven't really done anything. And the big thing that you need to pay attention to is the fact that it was noticeable, especially, especially uh, this the this last year where they really, really, really could have helped themselves, man. They could have absolutely helped themselves and they just did not do it to the extent that everybody thought. They got Brenton Strange in the second round last year. They got Tank Tank Biggs being the third round. Uh, Tank gets a chance to redeem himself this year, maybe with limited opportunities. But when you do get those opportunities, when he does get those opportunities, you would really, really hope, man, that he does not screw this up. And just seems like everything that could go wrong, every time he touched the ball, every time he was around the ball, every time he breathed on the ball, it deflected and went somewhere where it wasn't supposed to and ended up with the hands of other people. Brent Strange just didn't do anything, especially when you consider the fact that there are players that the Jaguars could have taken that would have absolutely helped this team last year. And this is how I came to this conclusion. Well, I already knew it, but I really, really looked at it. And it's like, it, it what upsets you is the fact that they got dudes that could have helped this team right now. And they got guys, they didn't get them. They, they had guys that are on the board that could have helped the team this year. And they did not get it done. They didn't get it done. And now what they did was they could have helped the, the, the players could have helped them last year. But what, what happened was they passed up on some players and those players uh, ended up helping their team. And then the Jaguars actually had to double back this year. And in doubling back this year, what they did was they addressed the positions that would have been addressed had they picked the right players and I'm pulling it up right now to get to it. I'm trying to get to the Jaguar selection here and the Jaguars picked 61st. They picked Brenton strange. It was 61st. Yeah. They picked uh 61st in the draft. So some fans were confused. They said, well, they could have gotten Osiris Tarns. Uh, according to this, they couldn't have because um, they moved back. Now, unless the Jaguars were a little bit higher than this, and I think they may have been at 27 and they traded with the Cowboys and went back because in the first round, the Jaguars actually did pick 27. So I think what people are saying is had they stayed where they were instead of moving back, they could have had Os Osiris Torrance, which is a big physical mover, a people mover at the guard position. And he would have been young and he would also have been on a rookie deal, which means one of those guys that they currently have, they wouldn't have had to keep him, right? And they would have been able to move on and get some other people. So I'm trying to look at some of these players here where the Jaguars 
could have possibly gotten some help. A lot of these dudes haven't really busted out yet. They haven't really. I mean, you could talk about Josh Downs, but at, at that point last year, they were settled with their top three receivers. You can bring up Tajay Spears, who, while he's a good player, the Titans have actually gone out and signed a running back this year. Definitely could have used Devin A. Chain, but you think of who they already had, and that's what I meant when when I talked about teams being committed to guys that that may be on their way out or are not as good as the dude that's sitting right down the board. Imagine Devin A. Chain in the offense here in Jacksonville backing up Travis Etienne. It, it, it would have been unreal, unreal. Folks will wonder why didn't they take Darnell Robinson and take it instead of taking Brenton Strange, right? And, and that's a real good point. What about Siaki Ika, defensive tackle, big defensive tackle for the Browns? Maybe he would have been a really, really good player, right? There were a lot of players that the Jaguars could have taken. But when you look at, when you actually look at the guys that are on the board, maybe DeWan Jones, but they had just taken the right tackle. Maybe you think they take two and move Anton Harris on the left. There's a lot of things that could have happened. But one thing we know, one thing that we absolutely know that did not happen was the Jaguars did not get impact out of their second round pick. Perhaps they did too much trading and too much moving back and they could have stuck right where they were and got them a, a young 23 year old guard or 22, 23 year old guard to go with Anton Harrison and really, really address that offensive line with two big physical young football players, as opposed to taking the route where they had to go out and trade for Ezra Cleveland. And then they had to resign Ezra Cleveland and the money Ezra Cleveland's total contract would have been covered. That would have more than covered. That would have been probably twice as much as they would have paid for Cyrus Torrance. But we're splitting hairs here. The only thing I'm telling you is, no matter who they didn't get, the matter is the guy that they did get, he better make a big jump this year. And that is Britton Strange. Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't show anything more than he, la he did last year, that is going to be a, a draft pick that teams that people will look at and go, that is an absolute failure. That is an absolute failure of a pick, and we can't keep doing that. Now, what will make it worse is that they do it twice in a row, and that's why I'm, I'm sitting here bringing it up because day two can be good, but likely it won't if they continue to do the things that they've done in the past. Walker Little is another one. You wonder, though, if Trent, the further he gets away from easy scouting in the first round, does he get a little gun shy, and does he start depending on too many things that the tape doesn't show? his gut feeling about stuff and his traits and all of these other things. And are they really, really prioritizing the things that they need to prioritize in order to get the right player in, uh, in, in those second and third rounds in those day two. So day two really was a wash. And I, and I got a buddy of mine who, who is pretty well versed in, in this subject that you saw some people leaving after day two last year that were not happy in the scouting department just faceless folks that if you saw them in the mall or at one of your favorite restaurants you wouldn't even know who they are but that those guys were shaking their head last year it sounds like trent didn't really go and get the people that they wanted um but ultimately it's his is his decision and that's why we're blaming it all on him and we're gonna make it live with him that if they don't do better in the second and third round this year, you're going to still have people because what's, what's going to happen is folks are going to get, forget about day one once it's over. When day two starts, if he doesn't hit it and he doesn't nail it, it's just going to be more of um, this is some BS. This ain't no master class. He doesn't know what he's doing outside of the first round. I'm going to talk about some draft must-haves and some drafts, some of the draft hope nots. I'll do that to close out this particular episode of Locked on Jaguars, and I'll do it in just a second. Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by BetterHelp. If you have been in a situation where you have needed therapy, BetterHelp is right there for you. It has really, really helped me. It has absolutely helped me tremendously. Um, the main reason is why I've had a lot of things go wrong and I couldn't get myself back on track. Now, the thing that I'm bothered with is getting my time, trying to live my life 
the way that I want to do it and, and not wishing that I had more time to do a lot of the things that I want to do. I get to the point where I feel guilty that I'm not able to spend as much time with my grandson, sometimes with my wife. And you know what? Better help can help you uh, figure out how to use your time more wisely. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. And whether you have time management issues or not enough time in the day to do the things that you want, never take for granted how much therapy can help you figure those things out. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10 percent off your first month. That's better help. H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on third and final segment here on locked on jaguars where it's your team every day we thank you for always making us your first listen are you watching fox sports and espn on your tv all day have to turn down the volume with all the shouting make the switch to locked on sports today that's what you need to do a free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming and yelling locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free fires free amazon fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and we're gonna try to figure out some do's and don'ts or some must-haves and hope nots is what i call it. let's start with the hope nots i hope trent doesn't overthink this i really really hope he does not overthink this draft i hope he doesn't sit here and try to look like the smartest guy in the room and he makes a pick and a choice if it works, I won't say anything, of course, but if it doesn't work, you know we're going to light him up on here because that's that comes with the territory. It's what we're supposed to be able to do. But then don't make me regret my words. And my words today have been this, that Trent Baalke never screws up the first round with the Jaguars. It would be my luck that as soon as I say that, Trent Baalke goes out and he screws up the first pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I also, somebody proposed a trade for me today where you move, where you want to move out of the first, I'll give you a second and two thirds and, and give you a fourth round pick next year. No, I don't want day one to go by and I, I want, I don't want Trent Balky to give up. I, I remember I, I broached that possibility and I did that because just in case it happens, I want to give you the plus side of it, but that's just some stuff that I just don't want them to do. I want them to leave day one with a really, really good football player. That's what I want, I, because that's what I'm used to. That's what they've been doing. That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm sure and almost comfortable with saying that I know for a fact that it's going to happen. That Trent Baalke is going to end up with a good pick on day one. Don't overthink it. Don't make me regret my words. Please don't make me come back here and have to tell people this dude doesn't know what he's doing at all. What I also don't want them to do is to draft a guy that's going to be a backup for more than a year. If you draft a, a player that isn't assured a starting spot in, in, in round one, then you better be somebody that's a contributor, like an edge rusher that can come in on sub packages when guys get moved around and he can be on the field with both Josh Allen as well as um, Trayvon Walker. I wouldn't mind a young defensive tackle, somebody that just goes in and says, you know what, I'm not waiting my turn. I'm going to push these old jokers out of the way. I wouldn't mind that either, somebody that has to split time with both Devon Hamilton as well as Eric Armstead. I would not mind that one bit because while he won't officially be a starter, he can, he can play starter-type minutes and have starter-type impact. Do not draft a safety. I don't think there's one with a first round grade on them, but especially when Ty Tyler Newbin's numbers came out and, and they were so bad, I thought he was the best safety in the draft and he might still be, but those numbers uh, from his workout ain't going to help him get picked early and they shouldn't. An offensive lineman for the future. I could see that happening because if it's a tackle, it might, that future might not be that far away, especially if the dude comes into camp and he's able to, show that he's better than people think and he's ready to play and maybe they can move Anton over to left. And then maybe there's a trade possibility out there for Cam Robinson, who I'm not in a big hurry to get rid of, by the way. 
I'm just not. But what I do want for the Jaguars is I want them to come away with at least three people. I know somebody said two. I'm going to go with three. Three guys that are day one contributors, right? That means right off the bat, they're going to help your team get better. So the easiest place to do that is at places, is at positions where guys get a lot, a lot of opportunities. Wide receiver, corner, edge. They get a lot of opportunities because normally when you have an offensive lineman that is your sixth lineman, he may play, but he ain't gonna play that much because one of your goals is to make sure that they have that continuity, cohesion, and and and, all, and chemistry and all of those C's that we always talk about, right? There's four of them. I just named three. I can't remember the other one, but consistency, continuity, cohesion, and I, I can't think of the fourth one right now, but whatever it is, that needs to happen. So that means you can't do that and be playing a sixth guy at the same time, unless she's one of those dudes that comes running in and he reports to the official that he's eligible. But that's not really what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about somebody that can absolutely flat out help this team right away. Then I want some developmental prospects, guys that in a year, or two, you won't be able to keep them off the field in a year or two. And that means that when some of these other dudes start getting older, you're able to start pushing them out. Right. So I really, really, really want them to make sure. And this is the draft must have. You got to have a lengthy man to man corner. You also he needs a running buddy. Get another one and get a guy that can play the slot. You got to have as many guys that can get up in the face and challenge these wide receivers with the way that these rules are in today's NFL. So those are the pretty much things I hope they don't come away with or without that. But one of the things I want to do is to come away with impactful players. Like you can count them. I remember the last time it really happened uh, outside of the, the Trevor Lawrence draft where the team was so bad that some guys got a chance to play early. Remember now Cisco didn't play early and Tyson Campbell actually didn't really play that much the first half of his rookie year. The guys that were playing a lot were Trevor and ETN. I want to come away with, and I know this is asking a lot because of where they're picking. Maybe not the exact impact, but the Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, Yannick Ngakwe. You saw right away that that was a huge impact that, hey, we hit on something. And I think that's the type of momentum that Trent Baalke needs to get people off his back. But the Jaguars as an organization, they don't do as good a job as messaging as some teams. They don't do as good a job as transparency. But what will calm and, and calm the natives is, natives is if you get some playmakers. I don't care if it's a dude that he only he only gets two touchdowns during the season, but when he gets them, they're electrifying, right? You got a corner that's going to have his, his, his days where he's not playing well, but then some days where he is going to play real well. Those are the things that I want the Jaguars to do. I want to see some young, fiery Michael Carter do uh, – uh, you know, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Carter, Dwayne Carter. I want to see these dudes on, on, the, on the line. If you go interior, I don't mind Christian Haynes. Get me somebody that's going to push people out of the way. I want to see competition. Trent Baalke said something at, at a presser this year when he talked to the media. He said, iron sharpens iron. We need competition. We need guys trying to take people's spots. And that's all I ever wanted to hear. That's why I didn't want to hear the year before when they were sitting there talking about, well, we got our team. No, you never have your team. You never arrived. You're always trying to get better. That's what evals are for. That is what free agency is for. That is what the draft is for. It's not to rest on your laurels and play it safe. You better be a go-getter and get some football players in here, and that's what I want to see them do uh, this draft cycle. All right, man, you guys make sure you tap in here to Locked on Jaguars every single day. I know you ain't going to have no problem doing that because if you did, you wouldn't be here listening to me right now. But Locked on has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked on Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channel channels app you guys make sure you take care of each other and i'll take care of you by being back here with another edition of locked on jaguars tomorrow as we head towards the nfl draft make sure you tap in every single day so you don't miss an episode until then i'll talk to you later